Honestly, you will need three boxes of hankies for this one. It's so incredibly emotional and you are remarkable, oh, absolutely you. remarkable. So you, you had this horrific accident and of course you're, you, you were and indeed still are somebody who, you like a challenge? I do like a challenge. You do yes. like a challenge? I do like a but, challenge. But how on earth did you come to terms with what happened to you? Um, I think because the accident, um, when I actually um, had the accident coming down a hill on a bike and hitting a post, breaking so many bones, I broke 11 burns and punctured my lung, and I lay in bushes for so long, about an hour, actually thinking I was going to die and thinking I'd never see my children again, you come to terms very quickly to losing the loss of your legs because compared to the loss of your life, mm. that's nothing. And is the kids that just kept you going? It was. I kept shutting my eyes and I could see their faces and I promised them a roast dinner. When I got home, I thought, they're going to kill me if I don't go home tonight. I've got to cook a roast dinner. <laughs> did you know how bad it was, though, when you were lying I there? I did. I felt the paralysis uh, come up my body like a warm fluid. You could feel you it? You can actually feel Jeez. it. Yeah, well, I could. And I just knew. I thought, oh, my gosh, Mandy, you're never going to walk again. But I thought, well, hang on a minute. I could actually die. So that was Jeez. the reason why. You I are remarkable. So and it's been a long, long process, hasn't it, getting to where you are right now? It has. But of course, when you get out of hospital and you go back to your house, it's. Mm. You can't. It's yeah. impossible, really. It needs to be sorted, which is where you come in. Yeah. And we, you're a fantastic team. Yeah, well, we got an we got a, a application. We get hundreds, thousands of yeah, applications. Yeah, I was just going to ask you what really jumped out about this one. Well, it, it, your friend Joe wrote to us. Oh, and really Joe, sure. um, who had, uh, I, had not been in the area long, but you become very yeah, close friends, new yeah. buddies, and all the rest oh. of it. And then she sort of felt that she'd had a friend kind of almost taken away from her a little bit in this accident. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and knew that she wouldn't be able to do, you wouldn't be able to do all the things that you wanted to do. So the thing that's, that stood out for us were, one, the absolute positivity that you showed in, in everything that you did, which yeah. is extraordinary. Um, and you get to see more of that in the show. Um, but also just that Joe's, that she, Joe was saying that she could, um, if we could maybe get Amanda back into the house, she could do the things she wanted to, which was yeah. be a mum. Right. And of course, the thing that people don't realise when you have an accident of this kind and not being able to move around your house is that you can't cook. Uh, you weren't able to cook, you weren't able to sit at, dining, at the dining table with the family. See, that's a nightmare, isn't it? It's all these things we take for granted. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, and you weren't able to do them no, at all? No, I wasn't able to do them at all. It just, I'd had my role as mum just completely stripped from me, and that's what hurt the most and I found the most difficult. And you don't, I would imagine, I haven't just met you, but I imagine you're not the kind of person that wants everyone else to do things for you. No. You want to do it for yes. yourself. You don't want that taken away no, from you. No, no. Your independence is so important. And like you say, when you have it taken from you, you really realise how much you value it. Yeah, yeah. So, And that's why I think I became so active outside my house, because I felt so trapped within the house. So it was just right. a way of getting away I understand. and doing things myself. Yeah, yeah. When I was outside on my bike or doing yeah. horse riding, I had the control. Mm. In the house, it was just a house of horror. I didn't have that control. Well, so. It's not a house of horror yeah. anymore. Oh. But was it was it particularly difficult one to actually do? Yeah, it was tough. It was because it's uh, it's, uh, it's not a big house and it's no, not a it's house not because of the way where it's built that we can extend in any direction. Yeah. And then the other thing is the amazing thing is that not only do we get the trades join in and this like hundreds of builders coming to join and everything else, but we get specialist things. We asked that well, I had this idea. One of the things you don't think about is when you cook when you have a disability below the waist, you don't have any feeling in the legs. So if you spill anything hot on you, don't oh, realise until you go to bed at night. I you could be severely yeah. burned without even knowing. Well, I'd have burns on my leg. I'd go to bed, take my trousers off, and I'd have, like, blisters. And it would be from trying to cook on sure, a sure, hob sure. that was too high but, yeah. and I picking things out. So we managed to put in... You'll see in the programme, but I mean, I'm, right. not, I'm not giving too much away to know that you, we actually put a rise and fall hob so that you can cook... So the fact that family can cook normally and then you right. can lower it all and... But also, we put out... I had to come up with this idea to create, a, like, a, a leather apron to protect um, mm, uh, Amanda's right. legs while she was cooking. We put out an appeal for leather workers and we got contacted by Rolls-Royce, who was just down the road. Right, OK. I know. So I you've know got a Rolls-Royce apron. Yeah. She's got a Rolls-Royce <laughs> apron, a heat-proof Rolls-Royce apron made Have. by the upholstery department of Rolls-Royce, <laughs> embroidered yes. with Rolls-Royce. And this, look, the Rolls-Royce And the seat cover, Rolls-Royce seat seats. For goodness well. sake, that's so, incredible. That's the great thing is, with the programme, is like, it, it draws the community yeah, together from yeah. high and does. car manufacturers mm. to local plasterers to whoever. That's and amazing, it really is. And you've also said that, in a way, you don't have many regrets. You feel that this has made you oh. a better, stronger person. Much better. Taught me that's, to be patient. But that's remarkable to mm. have that sort of mindset, isn't mm. it? But you really do feel that. I do. I wouldn't change it. And I really stand by what I say. If I was at the top of the hill again and someone said, you can just walk away and not let it happen... I'd go for it. I'd say, no, really? I would want... Yeah, I, I'm so happy with my life. I wouldn't change it for the world. It's just given me so much. I've met loads of amazing people. I've had lots of humbling experiences where I've met people who are really, really poorly and so positive. And it puts mm. into perspective 
but what I've got is so much. So I'm much more grateful for everything. Plus, she's a superwoman. I mean, she's like, you know, I went to see her riding. She's not really, given the injuries she had, she's not supposed to be able to do horse riding, but she is doing horse riding. Love it. And we're currently trying to search for a, um, a wetsuit manufacturer mm. who will make a wetsuit, because you want to go scuba diving. I'm, I'm, going, in Egypt. I'm going to Egypt in May. I'm going scuba diving. So the, so but wow. the difficulty is, it has to be thermal, and it's wow. difficult to get on a leg. Yeah. So if we can find, if there's one out there yeah. who would like to make a thermal wetsuit that velcros up the legs, because obviously with a mm. disability it makes it easy. Of course. Then do get in contact with us. That's an amazing mm. thing. And I know that you do lots of blogging. You've helped lots of people. The book, The Sky is Not the Limit. And it says here, one woman's inspiring and humorous account yeah. of coming to terms with sudden disability. Because I think you're right. You've got a great sense of humour, as have you. And I think that is really important as mm. well. It gets you through. Oh, it does. Smile. It really is. We, got, we bumped into each other at Stoke Mandeville so when we fun. met another person that was on the programme and literally laughed. We had, they had to come and tell us to keep quiet because the noise <laughs> we were making. Uh, yeah, yeah.